360 video is becoming extremely popular lately, which is why I have the Insta360 ONE R action camera. I highly recommend it, and if you don't have one, definitely pick one up by using the link down in the description box below. I use this thing on a lot of BTS videos. You can check them out on either my YouTube channel, or you can follow me on my Instagram page at momentum underscore productions. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to edit 360 videos using the Insta360 Studio. This is a software meant for your PC or Mac that a lot of people actually don't know about. You don't only have to use your phone to edit this 360 video, you can use their software for your computer too. And in my opinion, it's a better way of editing your 360 videos. So here's the Insta360 Studio. I'm gonna give you a quick rundown on what everything is, how to import your footage, and how to make your footage look good, and how to control the keyframing and all of that good stuff. So this is the 2020 version of Insta360 Studio. If you don't have the latest version, I'll leave a download link in the description box below. So make sure you get that updated. So now I'm just gonna go to my SD card where all the footage is loaded. I'm gonna open up the DCIM folder, camera 01. And here are all my videos that I shot over the last couple of days. Now you can either copy this footage onto your computer or backup, or you can just dump it right into Insta360 Studio. Just remember not to remove your SD card, otherwise there's a chance of you corrupting your files and your project will just close. So I'm just gonna go ahead and drag and drop it right into the side here and give it a second to load. Now you can see the thumbnails start to populate and this is what we're gonna be seeing once we import our videos. There's two different ways on how we can view our footage. One is the extra wide view or free capture. We are going to be using the free capture option because this is how we're gonna actually edit our videos. You can use your mouse and just drag it across the frame and you can just scroll through basically any direction you want. Top, down, left, right. This is a 360 camera so you can literally go to any different angle you want. And for those of you who are new to video editing, at the bottom here where the footage is loaded, this is called our timeline. Everything that's gonna be in our main video will be in the timeline. You can scrub through the timeline by moving your mouse side to side, and you can click on the timestamps to browse through the footage. I'm gonna start in the beginning. Now we are going to be messing around with keyframes. Keyframes animate the frame. So for example, if I want to start on this shot right here, I'm going to put in a keyframe by clicking on this target button. Here's one keyframe. Let's say I scroll down further down the timeline and I want this shot to go to this frame. I'm going to add another keyframe. And check out this little animation we have going on. You can see how the 360 frame is actually moving to the left. So we start at this frame and we are slowly panning over to the left and you can do the same thing with any direction. We also have different field of view options. So if I go to the first frame right here and highlight it, and all you have to do is just click on it, we can change the field of view. By clicking on this field of view, we get much less distortion, and this is more of a regular camera angle. To the left of that, we have this cool little circle frame. It distorts the image a lot, but it gets you a really cool effect. To the left of that, we have Tiny Planet. And for those of you who uh, really like those trippy psychedelic videos, <laughs> this is how you're gonna achieve that effect. Tiny Planet is a great little trick here too. And you can animate it as much as you want. And to the left of that, we have the ultra wide fisheye angle. And you can see slight distortions right at the edges of the frame. Now what's really great is that not only can you animate the direction of the frame, but you can also animate from a wide angle to a tiny planet. So check this out. Pressing play, it's gonna go to the tiny planet. Boom, how cool is that? So that's how you can set different keyframes using different camera angles. To make any necessary trims to your video, all you have to do is drag these side yellow handles over and there's your trim. When you're done and ready to export your video, all you have to do is go to this little button here at the upper right hand corner, start export, and since this camera records at 100 megabits per second, 
that's exactly what we're going to set this setting to. So set it at 100 and set the resolution at 1920 by 1080. If you shot this at H.265, export it at H.265. You'll get much better compression this way. Color Plus is Insta360's way of enhancing the colors in your videos. But be careful because this also adds grain to your videos. So I usually set this to off. If you have low light footage and you see a little bit of grain, you can check mark the remove grain option. This will take more processing time. After that, you can name your files anything you want, and then you can set the path to where you want this video exported to. Once you're done, click OK. And just like that, it's exporting. What's great with Insta360 Studio is that you can exit out of the render window and continue working on other video clips. So let me scroll down here and double click on this video clip. Again, it's gonna give you that ultra wide view, but this is not how we're gonna be editing our videos. We're gonna to go to free capture. You can hear the fans kick up on my computer as it's exporting. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna to go to the export queue and just cancel this export. I don't really need that video clip anyway. Awesome. Now let's say we want to change the aspect ratio to let's say a format for Instagram or your other social media platforms. All you have to do is click on the 16 by nine box right here and you have multiple different aspect ratios to work with. One by one, which is going to be the square. You have nine by 16, which is great for Instagram stories. You have the traditional widescreen 16 by nine the four by three, which is also meant for Instagram. And we have the 235 one, which gives you that ultra wide cinematic look. Let's say I want to make an Instagram story. Make sure the nine by 16 aspect ratio is selected, and then you can reframe this shot any way you want. If you don't want to manually keyframe the shot, you can also do the auto keyframing option. So select this button right here, and just drag over the subject you want to track. And Insta360 will track the object for you. If you weren't happy with the auto track, you can always click on the yellow highlighted area and then press on the delete key. And then you can redo the auto track or manually keyframe. To the right side of the auto tracker is time shift. And this basically controls the time of your clip. So if I want to speed it up, this is a great way of doing it. And then we have the trim options. I can scroll to any part of the clip, press this button here, and it will automatically trim it to that playhead. Same thing for this little button right here. And these two buttons will navigate throughout the clip. Here's another video clip. As you can see, it came out very smooth. That's because of the flow state stabilization inside the Insta360 ONE R. But if for any chance you don't wanna use it, you can always go to the options on the right side panel here and unselect it. You can see the difference though. Here's with flow state off, and here is with flow state on. You can also lock the direction of the orientation so that way it doesn't move. Another option we have here is called stitching. If you notice, if I scroll down right here, you can see that the little mount I have for my 1R is kind of cut off. That's because the Insta360 cameras fuse together. So basically we have two seven millimeter lenses. These are extremely wide, but there is a little blind spot on this camera. So what it does is it tries to stitch these lenses together to create that 360 field of view, but that blind spot will remain blind. So they came up with a little algorithm to try to stitch both of those lenses the best way possible without it cutting anything important out of the frame. But here you can see that the stitching did cut out the mount. Not that it's important, but that's what this option is right here. If you have lens guards on, it will make the stitching more pronounced. And you can notice it will try to remove more of that blind spot. So just keep that in mind. And same thing with all the other dive cases and accessories that you have that will require more stitching of that blind spot. Below that is stitching calibration. Dynamic stitching means that the stitching will constantly change while you move the camera around. 
chromatic calibration will adjust the colors to make them as accurate as possible without having any distortion in those colors. And the Aerial Edition is for those who have that aerial pack that allows you to mount the 1R to your drone. I unfortunately don't have that, but if I do ever get it, I'll make sure to review it for you. You also have the option to manually calibrate the stitching. But Insta360 already does a really good job of this, so I never really have to worry about it. And below that, we have the logo settings with Insta360's logo. You can put this anywhere you want in the frame. You also have the option to add your own logo or watermark. I also want to let you in on a little trick that I do. I use the same shot, but two different frames. So if I want a shot that's in the front and in the back, all I have to do is export the shot that's in the front. And then after that, I can re-edit the same video clip just with the frame facing the back. And I export it that way as well. And then I just export it again but with a different keyframe with the frame pointing backwards. So that way we get two different shots, but it's recorded at the same exact time with the same exact camera. Only 360 cameras can do this. And this is something I really love. Now I do want to mention that Insta360 Studio is not a video editing platform. It's not like Final Cut or Premiere Pro. This is just so you can export your 360 videos to make it editable. So keep that in mind. After I'm done editing my 360 videos, I export it and then place it into Final Cut Pro. And then I add it to my main video timeline. And then I export it with my regular footage coming from my Sony A9. And that's how I make all of my BTS videos that you probably have seen on Instagram and on YouTube. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you're interested in picking up the Insta360 ONE R, I highly recommend this camera. It's an absolute beast and it does so much. Make sure you check out the link down below and I'll see you guys in another video. Peace.